Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Arkan here, and continuing our topic of the logic gates, in which today we are, we are left with the arithmetic gates, uh, which means they are two in number, the exclusive OR and exclusive NOR gate. So first we see the exclusive OR gate. Exclusive OR gate. All right. This is in short written as the XOR gate. All right, this is in short written as the XOR gate. The symbol for this gate is like this. It, it's, it's a little similar to the to the OR gate. We have it like this, but we have this sign over here. Well, let me draw it a little nearer. So, so we have we have it like this. And it is also a multi input gate. And the output for everyone is only is, is only one, okay? Single output. This is a multi input gate. So let's say we have the inputs A, B. So the output is what? It's Y. Let's say a function Y. And the function is A, X, or B. Now this plus. In circle shows what? This shows the XOR operation. All right. And what is this XOR operation? This XOR operation basically is a combination of this AND and OR operation. We have Y. If it's A, X, or B, so we have it as A. Uh, or A ended with B complement. And then OR with A complement ended with B. All right. And this is also uh, this X, A, X, or B. This is also equal to A OR with B ended with A complement OR with B complement. So this is the inside circuitry. This is the inside circuitry of the exclusive OR gate. Right. And let me draw it over here as well. If this is the simple XOR gate, we have the uh, inside, we have what? So we have this two in, uh, let's say, this is A, one AND gate. This is the second AND gate. And then uh, they both are OR. All right. So. Over here we have what? We have an A. We have A to the first, all right? And and we have a B complement to the first. And to the second we have a B as well. So I take one B from over here and I give a complement of it over here. Which means what? This B complement is given. So A and with a B complement is this output. This is given to this OR gate. And over here we have a B and we have A's complement. So let's say I choose a color for it. And this, uh, one minute, I have to draw this NOT gate as well. So this is now the B complement. So, uh, sorry, this is now the A complement. So we have what? We have A complement and with B. And these both are OR as well. So these both are OR. And over here I have the function Y, which is A, X, OR with B. So this, uh, this hole is the external circuitry for this thing basically, all right? Or I can draw it uh, through this way as well. And how is this? So we have two OR gates. Where should I draw it? Let me draw it over here. We have two OR gates. Uh, this is the first. I don't know how to draw these gates properly. But let's assume that you are understanding it, alright? So we have one OR gate. We have the second OR gate. And they are then ANDed together. So how's that? A is OR with B first. This is, let's say, A. And this is a B, all right? 
and they, the output is then given to an AND gate. The second output is also given to an AND gate. And here we have A complement and B complement. So this is, let's say, the A complement. And, and over here we have the B complement. This was the A complement, this is the B complement. And this is the function y, which is equal to a x or with b. So this, either this circuitry or this circuitry is the internal circuitry for this exclusive OR gate. Now the truth table, the truth table. So let's say we have two inputs a, b, and the function y is a x or with b. So now this would be y. Say so we have a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So if you want to prove it for yourself, you can prove it from these parts or write it directly. And you prove 1, 2, all of them. That's your homework, that you have to prove how these have values have come. I show you that this exclusive OR gate this basically is an odd ones detector. This is an odd ones detector, which means what? Here we have odd number of ones, so this output would be high. Here we have odd number of ones, so the output would be high. In other cases, the output is a zero or a low state. Now, how did this come? So this is your homework to prove from these props, from either this or this. You can use this or that, both of them, to prove the truth table, all right? That's your homework. Now, the basic properties over here as well, we have A, X or with A, A, X or with A complement, A, X or with one, and A, X or with zero. Now A X odd with A, so which means itself, 0 odd with 0 is 0, 1 X odd with 1 is 0. So which means A X odd with A is what? It's a 0 simply. Now A X odd with A complement. So if 0 odd with 1 is a 1 and 1 odd with 0 is also a 1, so which means A X odd with A, A X odd with its complement is a 1. Now A X odd with 1, so 0 X odd with 1 is 1. And 1 x odd with 1 is a 0, which means a x odd with 1 is an a complement. All right? And now a x odd with 0, so a x odd with 0 is an a, because 0 odd with 0 is a 0, and 1 odd with 0 is a 1, so a x odd with 0 is an a. All right? These are now the basic properties. All right, now we have some other properties as well, so let's say I remove this this part of it all right now now i say this this part also so you've seen that a x odd with a is a zero but now if i have a x odd with a x odd with a if i have it three times so then it would be it would be what so have a look for two times it's a zero this is a zero and then x odd with a so 0 x odd with a comes out to be what we've seen, it's a. Which means that now if you, uh, or let me generalize it for you. If I have a x odd with a x odd with a up to up to up to x odd n times a. All right, n times a. So it would either be an a or it would be a 0. Now, when would this be an A? This would be an A if this N is even. If N is even. And this would be a zero if N is odd. Sorry. If N, it would be an A if N is odd. If N is odd, so it would be an A. And if N is even, so it would be a zero. All right? Okay. Now we, uh, we've seen from the formula, and, and let's say, let's say, let's say we have A, X odd with B is equal to C, all right? So then we can have what? From this, we can have B, 
XOR with C equals A. And we can also have A XOR with C to have a B. And all these properties implies to get a basic property and a very important property that A XOR B XOR C is equal to zero. If this is the case. So this is a very important property, all right? Now, if you check for the commutative and associative laws, so commutative first, commutative. So for commutative, A XOR with B is equal to B XOR with A, okay? So we check it directly, zero XOR with one is a one, and one XOR with zero is a one. So which means this as commutative law has been satisfied, all right? And now uh, the associative property. Associative property is what? So, so we, we do that. We do that mathematically. B XOR C is A XOR B XOR C, all right? And you can do it directly. Let's say A is equal to zero, B is equal to one, and C is equal to zero. So, so this is zero XOR with one or zero, and zero XOR one XOR zero. So 1 XOR 0 is what? It's a 1. And 0 XOR 1 is what? It's a 1. So now it's break the commutative property. 0 XOR 1 and 1 XOR 1 is what? It's 1. So 1 equals 1, which means it satisfies the associative property as well. All right? Okay. So the, the next thing we have is exclusive NOR gate. All right? And this is the last as well. Exclusive. NOR gate and in shortcut called the X NOR gate. All right, and what is the symbol for it? The symbol is like this. It's just like the exclusive OR. It's a multi input gate and we have a bubble over here. All right. So let's say, let's say we have the inputs. The inputs are A and B, A and B. So the output is what? It's a Y is equal to A exclusive NOR B. This, this dot encircled, encircled dot shows the exclusive NOR operation, all right? Okay, what do we have inside of this circuitry? What do we have inside of this gate? So this is an A ended with B. So we have this y equal to a ended with b plus an a complement and with a b complement. This is the inside of this exclusive NOR gate. And let me show you through a diagram. So we have two AND gates. This is the gate number one. This is the gate number two. And we, ha we have OR gates. Now look, this is the single gate. This is the first gate. This is the second gate. And they, these two are then OR together. So this is the function, which is A X NOR with B. All right, we, what do we have the inputs? The first input is an A, the second input is a B. And, uh, and for the second gate, we have what? We have A complement and we have B complement. And this gives what? This is the internal circuitry of this exclusive NOR gate. All right. Now we have the truth table. The truth table is what? So should I write over here? Write it. Yes, yeah, write it over here. So so if we, if we have two inputs A, B, and the function output Y is A X NOR B. So I think we can manage it over here, right? We have a zero zero. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Now these outputs. For these outputs, I have another homework for you. You take A, you take B from this truth table, you feed it over here, and you solve. I will write it directly, but you have to solve for yourself and verify this truth table. And you let me know in the comment section if I write it, if I wrote it correctly or if I write it wrong. All right? Now, in this case, if, 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 if A is equal to B, 
So the output would be a high. All right, which means in this case the output is high, and in this case the output is high. And if A is not equal to B, so the output is low in that case. So in this case, we see that this is low, okay? Now you have to prove this for yourself. Let me prove one of them. Let's say I take the first one, zero, zero. So, so let's have a look over here, zero, and it with zero. And then zero's complement is one, and one's, uh, zero's complement is again one. So zero ended with zero is a zero, or with one ended with one is a one. So zero or with a one is a one, and which means one is over here, which is correct. And you will prove the rest of them for you, okay? So that's about the truth table. Now the basic properties that we discuss, uh, that is a x uh, x nor with a a x nor with a complement a x nor with a one and a x not with a zero. So a with a, zero with zero is a one, one with one is a one, so which means a with one is a one. All right? Now a with a is a one, okay? Now a with a complement, so zero with a one and one is a zero. So this is zero in both the cases. Now a with one, so zero with one is zero and one with one is one, which means a with one is a. And a with zero, so zero with zero is a one and one with zero is a zero, which means A with zero is an A complement. All right, so these are now the basic properties of this exclusive NOR gate. Now we've seen from here that A, uh, uh, X NOR with A is a one, okay? But now what if we have the, like this, A, X NOR with A, X NOR with A. So for three times, what would it be? So for the two, you have a one, and then you have a one x not with a. So one x not with a gives what? It gives you an a. So you can generalize it like this for yourself that if a x not a x not a and so on to uh, to n times x not x not a x not n times a. So which means this would this could either be a one or this could be an a. And then when is this a 1? This is a 1 if n is e1. If n is e1. And when is this a, uh, a if n is odd? I hope this, is, uh, this writing is clear. If not, so I'm repeating. This is equal to 1 if this n is e1. And this is equal to a if this n is odd. All right? So this is again a simple property. The next thing we have is that x naught follows the associative and the commutative laws both. Commutative is simple and for associative we take an example. So commutative it follows, all right? Have a look. Zero with one is a zero, one with zero is a zero. So commutative has been followed. Now for associative. So let's say we take some values. We take A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, and C is equal to 0. So what would this, the associative law say? It's what? It's like, it is like this, right? And I believe you can prove it for yourself. Well, let me do it. Okay, 1, and then 0 with a 0, and then 1 with a 0, and then a 0. So zero with a zero is a one, all right? And then one with a zero is a zero. So one with one is what? One with one is a one, and zero with zero is a one. So we have one is equal to one, which means left is equal to right, and it follows the associative law as well, right? You check through the truth table. All right, now we have another important property Okay, the, about the XOR and the XNORs, all right? So XOR and XNOR are same for, for what? For even number of inputs, are same for odd number of inputs, for odd number of inputs. And XOR 
and x nor are complemented for a1 number of inputs and how is that so we see all right now they are the same for odd number of inputs which means what which means let's say we have three num we, th we have three inputs a b and c and they are x nord they are x nord so this x nord operation is the same as an x or operation all right which means that this is a valid expression we have odd number of inputs so they are the same the x nord and the x or operations are the same but but inputs let's say like this a x naught with b so this would now equal a x or with b and we have a whole complement to it because here we have even number of inputs and for even number of inputs we do what the xor and the x nor operations are complemented all right so that's all about the exclusive nor gate and that's also all about Today, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next lecture very soon, inshallah. Till then, take care of yourselves and everyone around you. Goodbye.